I was a little surprised to see Cisco NetFlow in the CCNA and because th we could do an entire separate 20 hour course on that and I may well do that uh, coming up here uh, in another course that is because it, this has a singular purpose, this product, to collect IP traffic statistics. These statistics can be used from anything to creating that network baseline I talked about earlier to helping us get uh, statistics to help us improve our network security, our quality of service. It's a very, very powerful tool. Uh, as you would expect, it's not something you can exactly master in five minutes. So we're going to talk about it here a bit. I'm going to show you a command or two. And then for outside reading, reading not required for your CCNA exam, but Cisco has an excellent site on NetFlow when and if you want to learn more about it. Now, Cisco developed NetFlow, but it is definitely not Cisco proprietary. If you do a Google search, use your favorite search engine, uh, an online search will quickly reveal that other vendors have happily developed their own NetFlow analysis and reporting software products. Best of all, network, NetFlow excuse me, is transparent to our network devices. We do need to heed this warning from Cisco's NetFlow config guide page, though. Quote, NetFlow does consume additional memory and CPU resources. Therefore, it is important to understand the resources required on your router before enabling NetFlow. That is sound advice. Nothing is worse than getting a new toy. You know, you get, you get uh, a new tool, I should say, but they're still toys. You know, they're fun. Uh, you know, you get this new program, or you get something new for your router, or you get something new for your network, and you're just ready to put in, and, you know, you don't have enough memory in something to run it correctly uh, or to run it at its optimum. So you definitely want to do your homework before you get started with NetFlow. One reason I am glad they put a little bit of this in the CCNA, though, it goes back to something we talked about way earlier in the course. Because before we even talk about NetFlow, we need to answer the question, what is a flow? You know, as uh, what what is a flow? Well, while advanced versions of NetFlow allow you and I, the network admins, to create user-defined flows, it's generally agreed between versions and apps that any traffic that shares the following attributes is part of the same flow. The ingress interface, the input interface that is, the source and destination IP address, the IP protocol, the source and destination port, and the IP TOS, the type of service. We talked about that a bit with multiplexing. Remember that way back when we were talking about the OSI model, that kind of stuff? And we talked about port numbers, you know, how can traffic be kept this kept um, or reassembled correctly if you've got three flows of traffic going to the same place? Well, one way is by keeping those flows separate when they get there by port number and then it can be reassembled. So it's really the same concept. That's what a traffic flow actually is. Now if you want to start your NetFig, NetFlow config, that is, from the command line, you would define what flows you want to capture via the IP flow interface level command. And notice you've got two options there to enable it outbound or enable it inbound. And you want to get that information to a device we call the collector with the IP flow export command. And note that the IP flow export command is a global command, which you're guaranteed to try at the interface level sooner or later. I certainly did, uh, and certainly have. And you can see there, I put IP flow export unrecognized command. The whoops was my editorial comment. And you, then you just put it in global. And you've got IP flow export. You uh, give the destination, interface name, source, and uh, even the version number. Now, in uh, just a uh, quick example here, config using a collector at 172.16.1.1 and the usual UDP port of 2055. You also using NetFlow version 5 and using the router's loopback 1 interface as the source of the NetFlow info sent to the collector would look like this. There's your destination command, your version command, and your source command. Note there, uh, used iOS help to show what comes after the destination and then the IP address. Note the port number is a requirement. It is not an option. There's no CR there. All you have to do to verify your config is run show IP flow interface and show IP flow export. And at the very beginning of the second command output, you'll see the NetFlow version number uh, and the source and destination IP addresses. So let me bring that up, and there you go. There's show IP flow interface. It's going to show you where you've got it, and also uh, whether it's configured for ingress, egress, or both. And in show IP flow export, it's got your source and destination addresses and your port there for the destination 2055. 
If you wanted to monitor the NetFlow info at the CLI, just use Show IP Cache Flow. And what I did here was run that, and you can see that I recently sent a string of pings through that interface. And you can see some of the information in here on that. And there, there at the bottom, there's my ICMP. And it's going to tell you your flows, flows per second, how many packets were in the flow. I sent four there, 100 bytes per packet. And it's even got source interface, source IP address of all zeros, etc. So a lot of information here. Like I said, this is hardly the kind of tool that you pick up everything in 10 minutes. But I did want to give you just a quick brief look around. You can see what's going on with NetFlow. Knowing what defines a flow in NetFlow is an excellent idea. And let me just bring that information back up so we can go over that again. Your input interface, your source and destination IP address, the IP protocol, the source and destination port, and the IP TOS, that is actually going to define what a flow is. You can find the website I'm about to show you just as easily as, uh, actually easier than I could trying to put this entire URL up here. And I don't like to do that because they do change places over time or locations. But this is an introduction to Cisco iOS NetFlow. It's a technical overview. And, uh, you know, not bad reading if you want to peruse this before your NA to see a little more of what's going on. It's a great idea. They even managed to illustrate it a little bit here. And you can see those uh, features we talked about are the values for a flow. And as they mentioned, you know, the flow information is fantastic for understanding what's going on in your network. You know, who's sending the most data? Who's receiving the most data? Uh, what kind of quality of service are we delivering? That kind of thing. So it really is quite a powerful tool. And it's a good thing for you to become a specialist in if you like numbers and that kind of thing. And if you didn't like numbers and statistics, you got in the wrong business. <laughs> they are pretty important in this business. So that concludes our look at NetFlow. I'll see you on the next vid.